Dallas, Texas. What do you buy your favorite millionaire who already has everything? Well, how about his and her mummy cases? Or a brace of light aircraft? For nearly 40 years, Neiman Marcus of Dallas has been wowing the world with its super elite shopping catalog. The rich and famous store once even offered his and her Chinese junks and sold 11 of them with an amazing $30,000 price tag. In any language, Neiman Marcus translates into money no object shopping and the man who created the legendary mystique is the merchant prince himself. Well into his 80s, Stanley Marcus still serves as chairman emeritus of Neiman Marcus stores. His fantastic story began in 1907 when his father Herman Marcus and Aunt Carrie Neiman wrestled with a choice between two investment opportunities. One was for $25,000 in cash and the other was for the franchise for the state of Missouri for a brand new product called Coca-Cola. Well, they were too smart to be taken in by some patent medicine drink and as a result of their bad judgment they took the $25,000 in cash and came back to Dallas. The family turned their store into the real thing, and Stanley learned a magic merchandising formula. The customer is always right. Once when a woman tried to return a dress she'd worn and ruined, Stanley's father told him to accept it with a smile. Well, I always believed that my father was a very wise man, but I didn't know that he was omniscient. Because about five years later, this woman's husband participated in the discovery of the East Texas oil field. He owned about 5,000 acres right in the center of it. And over the years, this woman and her husband and her children spent well over a million dollars with Neiman Marcus as a result of having been satisfied on that first transaction. Stanley's ability to keep the customer satisfied is matched only by his flair for the dramatic. In 1936, this merchandising maverick from the Lone Star Estate gave the legend a real boost when he bought a part of the J.P. Morgan Estate at auction. Well, this made news. Uh, other than advertising news, it, uh, the, the news services carried it. And one story brought on another story, and by the time life and Fortune had finished uh, the French press were over and then the British press and we were, were loaded with people and whenever we got word that life was coming down to do a story, first thing we'd yell out was get the cowboy because life insisted on having a cowboy in any picture they did about Texas in 1936. It wasn't valid unless there was a cowboy lurking somewhere in the background. So we had a stock cowboy we called in for decorative purposes, and uh, it satisfied them. Headline publicity surrounding the Neiman Marcus name only fueled the public's appetite to know more about the little old department store in Dallas. I used to get calls around mid-December every year from a man named Ed Murrah of CBS, or his young assistant, a fellow called Walter Cronkite, who'd call up and say, we're doing a Christmas roundup story. We'd like to know what is exciting this Christmas. What, what did you sell that made news? Well, one year I was able to tell them about a man from Amarillo who came in and bought five mink coats, one for each of his daughters and a sable coat for his wife. Well, they thought that was a terrific story. So Stanley Marcus came up with a marketing idea that would fix the Neiman Marcus mystique in the mind of the public. Super exotic stocking stuffers like his and her submarines made Christmas shopping a whole new ball game. It was a hard act to follow, but Super Stanley again set the merchandising world on its ear with the Neiman Marcus Fortnite, a two-week extravaganza of international culture, cuisine, and merchandise that brought the platinum card set running. Son Richard Marcus continues the fortnight while his unstoppable pop works tirelessly writing best-selling books. His quest for the best is required reading for the well-informed sophisticate. The man who could have anything and everything holds dear just two personal possessions. And believe it or not, neither is from the millionaire shopping list. I carry something that always on me that's a favorite thing and that's a uh, 
a very, very small knife. And it has uh, a blade and it has scissors. I think I like this. This and my uh, cellular telephone in my car better than any two things that I own. Stanley Marcus made the Neiman Marcus name mean a champagne taste on a Fort Knox budget. Yet he had one surprise super favorite that he has never changed since boyhood. It's early pound cake. It's, uh, it's an interesting thing because Sara Lee Pound Cake is one of the few products that started out good and has ended up as good as it started, even though it's produced by the mile now instead of by the cake. For Stanley Marcus, the name behind a legendary store, the sweet taste of success is having his cake and eating it.